And, and anything we have would tell us that that's accurate. So get away from that. So to bring New Haven in, okay, but to bring New Haven in, you're going to have to have a tip fee that competes with the rest of the market. If you're paying $11 a ton to Wallingford, we're and, guessing. We're, we're guessing. I, I'm saying uh, if they bring another town in, whether it's no, they can't commit full time to another town coming in. It would all be on an intermittent basis whenever there's capacity. Our contract prevents them on, on a five or more year basis to enter. They can't enter into a contract with anyone else. That's what I was looking for. Right. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. This we could have saved about 10 minutes in our, on that. In our okay. and typically, they're coming in with lower tip fees when they bring waste in. We didn't want them to give such a low tip fee. We're at 65, they bring it in at 58 or something. Right. They can only do that for a short term period because otherwise, you know, it's unfair to the, the member towns and what we're doing as far as a project. So, yeah, there's a control on that. That's in the original contract. I'm okay for right now. Councilor Teston. Um, well, I think one, one objection that, you know, people in the community raise, have really raised before and will be raising about this with the reduction in our, our income, our revenue, is the fact, you know, there are roads. Okay. So the way it is right now, um, obviously Wallingford haulers are driving on Wallingford roads wherever they have to go, house to house, um, and other communities are supposed to have certain routes they're supposed to follow when they're coming into Wallingford, correct? Supposed to state highways. Principally state. Okay, that's fine. So, so if you think, so is it fair to say that the um, <coughs> increase in traffic and potential wear and tear on Wallingford assets would be from the um, outgoing vehicles? You, would there be any increase in incoming vehicles? Mm -hmm. Other than what can happen now. I mean, they have a capacity of, what would you say, 145,000 tons? It's permitted for 143. All right. All right. So we wouldn't expect any real noticeable increase in incoming traffic. And if everybody follows the rules, things don't change. So the, it's outgoing traffic that will increase. Mm -hmm. Large, basically tractor trailer size vehicles, right. large dump trailers. I understand mm -hmm. that. What cool. was the number? A net increase of 13 vehicles per day. Well, that's what you said, and that was the that was the expectation. Net increase of 13 trailers. Right. And that is over and above the current slag trailers going out. <clears throat> Correct. How many? How many? Right. What's, uh, what's that's out against the right the ash and the. I, yeah, yeah they're all slag. Yeah. Yeah. The ash. Okay, fine. Um, how many vehicles of that, on an average, are leaving on a daily Six. basis? Six. Yeah. And then so, they have other um, vehicles coming in for consumables that they use. So, um, well, that's, that's okay. I mean, yeah. we face it, there's tractor trailers and trucks on the roads all the time from all the different businesses. I'm just trying to get the impact of this. So we're, we would expect a net, a net increase above and beyond what's already happening, mm -hmm. 13 more large trailer trucks leaving 13 more vehicles. vehicles. Now they go, when I mean, they leave the facility, they go over to John Street Bridge and they go down 91. Well, 95. Five, five, five. Yeah. It goes 68. State highways. State highways. Right. Okay, so wear and tear is on state roads, but our, so, you know, a lot of people have talked over the years and now, and now with this increase, concern about the John Street Bridge. Um, now, if I'm, refresh me on that one. That's our bridge, or what's the story with Amtrak? Combination ownership between state, towns, and I think railroad. The railroad. Okay. So, but engineering indicates that it's not it's not a failing bridge at this point. Right. But if it but if, but if the time comes eventually, it would anyway. But if the time comes that 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 bridge needs to be rebuilt, that would be a joint venture between us and the state and the railroad. That's our understanding. Has there ever been an estimate of what the expense would be for that? I haven't seen one. Actually, the town's the town's ownership is the is the uh, road surface, from what I understand. I think the, the bridge itself is the state, uh, and maybe that's state and railroad. I'm, 
I'm not sure, but the actual structure is, is State Railroad, and <coughs> ours is the, the road service. Roadway. Right. So, so if we had to do some, if there was wear and tear enough that we had to repair the surface, it would simply be the surface of the road? Right. I mean, the for instance is, is that, you know, no structural link, components? No notice, there's new chain link fence on that. <coughs> that was a cost, you know, that was something that we had to take care of, or guardrail repairs. That's something that we have to take care of. Now, it's a recoverable expense if it's an accident. There's, you know, but, but that is I mean, if that bridge needs to be re, if that bridge facility. needs to be rebuilt, it's not our expense to rebuild the bridge. We're, we're, we're not the sole owner of that. You see, I'm saying if that structurally that bridge needs work That's of any right. sort, our responsibility is the asphalt, in effect. Is that what you're saying? That's what's been explained to me by engineering. It's the road surface. Okay. I think it's safe to say it should be more than the asphalt. Whatever is underneath yeah, that. Yeah, I, can, the road I, got, I understand that. I'm just in general. It's not the structural steel or the concrete footings. It's not the bridge structure. That's what's right. been explained to me. Right? That would not be our responsibility. If it had to be done, well, it's not like it would be put off. Otherwise, the trains would be able to get there, right? So that would. So I mean, that's something that, that I think people need to be comfortable with and assured. And I'm, not, and I'm not sold that 13 more vehicles a day is going to make the bridge fail, given all the trucks have over it already, but that's a concern. People are saying, you know, we're, is, is a half a million dollars, you know, worth the wear and tear on our roads? And that's the common, common refrain that we hear. Um, and that, that's it for now. Councilor Mansfield. Thank you. Uh, so, um, so what we're pointing to, there's a cataclysmic shift in the industry. I, I, I liken it to back, you know, probably 15 years ago when we went from telephone to internet. In your contracts, you had a, a writer that said we would pay so much for a telephone service call. Well, the industry moved. It went to the online. There was nothing you could do to your contract. It, the, the, the provider said, take it or leave it. The telecom folks would say, here's your new contract, and you have to deal with it. Our, term, our industry has changed. And our distribution has changed, and economics, and our servicing has changed. So you have to adjust. Like it or not, leave us. That would be even easier, because your contract is overstated. It's too rich for supply and demand. So I liken it to this. This is what's good. I mean, their model has not change. The electric revenue isn't there. It's never going to be there. The powers of conservation, recycling, emissions, environment, the market shifted. So like it or not, we have an amendment coming. The state is, is actively pursuing um, anaerobic digestion projects. <coughs> Huge. And, 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 and federal and, grants are lining up for and, that. And there is a lot of federal money for that. And you know, they're looking it's, at three in the state. That's going to take more waste out of the MSW waste stream. The re-engineering of waste is here, and, and it's only the, 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 the proactive funding of that at every level, whether it's privatized or commercial or um, municipal funded from the federal government and the state is coming. So their cost of going up, so our economics at worst. So aside from that, I, I don't see there being much we can do about the economics. As, uh, in, and with all this, I, I, we want as much as we can. I just don't see it. However, um, the economic impact for us, of course, is huge. I also see the, the hit to our commercial um, businesses, who obviously are, whether it's the, the, the haulers or folks relying on this revenue. Is there any chance or opportunity to reclassify commercial waste with the same economic terms as residential? It, it, the sensitivity is we've got businesses in, more, in, in our town that are going to get hurt badly. And that we don't affects really our, know what those commercial waste are going to be. And I understand that market driven. Spot again. I just, I'm just I mean, wondering. Chances are, if they want it, if they need the waste to come in for capacity purposes, mm -hmm. they're, they're going to have to, you know. I mean, right now, my my view of it is, it's it's pretty much a a uh, what would you call it, a seller's market. Mm -hmm. But um, it's it's an unknown. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, you know, at this point. So, I don't think it's possible to try to okay. combine the commercial and the, the uh, residential in, in one lump. Okay, so, so if there's a variability risk that the town can't assume in that contract piece, or is that a covanta um, 
I just want to understand. Oh, that's that's Covantis. That's Covantis position. Okay. Yeah, that, okay. As far as I could see, they were pretty adamant. They were, they were. Okay, so okay. I just wanted to see if there was any window or, or, or glimmer because I think there is. Um, you know, there's going to be pain shared everywhere. Well, maybe, maybe not. Depending upon their plan. What the, what the, what the fee will be? Now, <clears throat> if it it's it's always coming from well, they have to ex that goes into our tonnage. The, the tip fee affects the residential. But they're not going to want it necessarily to be going anywhere else. So it's not like you can have a $75 tip fee and the rest of the tip fees are all at 65 or less and think you're going to get the waste here. It's not going to come here. No, just based on economics. Um, I'm sorry, so just to clarify, the, the annual commitment of 48,000 tons, that's ours to own, that's Wallingford's commitment. It's the five together. That, oh, to combined, okay, thank you. So that, that's the five together, residential. Or is that any, is residential, commercial, other, all of that gets included in the total. I just, I all find, of it gets included. All of it gets, gets included to meet them, that minimum commitment. Yes. Um, and understand that the market's going down, we expect to generate less trash every year. That's still a sustainable number from your last conversation. That was still, a, we can confidently hit that without triggering a breach ourselves in that contract piece. Yeah. Right, okay. That was it. Councilor Turner. Councilor Parisi. I read in here, and I can't find it, I should have marked it, that uh, the, the quantity of trash that, that enters into the pricing is based on what Cavanta deems to be acceptable. Now, there's a clause in there that says they can reject uh, uh, trash? Yeah, it, it's in the current contract. They can reject things that aren't really considered municipal solid waste, you know, appliances that come in. You know, occasionally they pull out OP waste. You know, it gets, somehow it gets in these trucks and it gets delivered to the plant. They pull out bulky waste, they pull out mattresses, things like that. That's what's kind of Car tires. <laughs> Is that a significant no. amount? No. No. Now, we haven't had any trouble with that. That's in the, the current, the, the original contract. Mm. It's only acceptable waste. Actually, much of what they would reject, I think maybe all of it, they aren't allowed to put through an incinerator anyway, according to the right. state law. So mm. they, they're limited in what they can take in the incinerator by state laws as well. Who wrote this country? Well, I don't know. Well, the whole. I mean, Covanta. Um, Covanta or I mean, the state the towns, or who? No, Covanta. The, the town certainly had input. They accepted it. Well, the draft people were essentially the, the lawyers. The lawyer for, for the lawyers for the towns and uh, the lawyer for uh, Covanta. With input, obviously, on the thought process, but when you start looking at the actual words, mm -hmm. that's, that's all done by the legal people. Um, excuse me, you made a comment that the chairman at the time of the council was involved in this, the negotiation? Yeah. What chairman was that? Mr. Brodinski. Okay. You know, one thing, if we look at this on a broad scale, large changes are occurring, as I think everyone recognizes. And as the amount of waste is reduced through the anaerobics or, or you know, the economy doesn't improve or more things are recycled, this, this also allows us to begin to look at an end game for the kind of money we can enjoy from, from this facility because it doesn't look good for a continuing a continuing revenue for the town of Wallingford. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it forces us to start looking at, well, you know, we, we can't rely upon this. So, you know, for five, for the next uh, six years till 2020, um, you know, we're going to have to be carefully looking at what's going on. There could be such huge changes that uh, the money we will receive from this won't 
be viable anymore. So it, it's, it's a way of beginning to recognize the winds of change are there and um, we, we've, we've got to be part of the process of dealing with less. Thank you. Uh, for the benefit of the public in attendance, we will be uh, discussing this and acting upon it potentially at the November 12th meeting and uh, the opportunity for public comment will occur then. Thank you for your patience tonight. Sorry. I, I wanted to, you know, because I knew that it was our workshop only. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to make sure I had uh, everybody's questions that they'd asked me to get answered. So I just asked for some clarification on some things. Um, so I just had a couple more things. One was um, if the idea of, of, of years down the road, then they, then they come back and say, you know, this isn't working. Um, again, I know we, we have the default remedies, which I'm still not clear about. I'll ask about that too. But couldn't there be some type of, um, I guess, remedy, uh, escape clause kind of for us? In other words, if they, if they have to bow out of this before the term of this contract is up, rather than leaving us hang, hanging, should, could there be something in there? in that contract that protects uh, us for a certain period of time. Well, we do have, it just, the contract what would, state what, that should they terminate this contract. Right. We have the option, all five towns have the option to have our waste go to the Bristol facility. Oh, okay. That whatever the tip fee is. The market the rate, uh, uh, yeah, whatever the market rate is. Oh, so our capacity, our contracted capacity would be correct, protected. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Well, we would have a place to go. But that's what the important. chairman was stating about I meeting apologize. our yeah. legal obligations. That's a termination that is, is proposed as um, the right of Covanta under the terms of the contract. Due to certain conditions occurring, they have a right to terminate as well as the towns. Um, a pure breach of contract, where we just don't like the way this is going, well, that, that it's a, that it's a damage issue. Again. I don't know how you come up with an estimate of what the damages are uh, in a vacuum. Well, what, that reminds me, you, you, you mentioned that earlier. Um, I am, I'm, there's more than enough one of me here that's not a lawyer. Um, I thought damages are calculated based on <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sullivan always says that when only the lawyers here. Um, but my understanding, aren't damages calculated based on um, what our costs would be? In other words, if, if they walked away, like I asked earlier, and you said, well, who's to say how the court would handle it because, you know, they could be losing money, this and that, but aren't the, wouldn't the, how would the damages be calculated? Wouldn't it be based on what we lose? We, we, we would have to... Regardless of what their financial situation is. Right, but, but obviously we would be scrambling to find another place. Assuming we found another place, then you'd have to be looking at what the cost is there versus the cost we had here, and there'd be additions and subtractions and, right. and ultimately work out what we would be suing for or settling on. I mean, there could be a settlement, sure. But there's a lot of unknowns in that right. process of... of how that would get sorted out. So, but it's fair to say that, that that's what it's, it's based on, not what their financial situation at the time is. In other words, they could, it, right. it's no, they not based on the fact that we just can't afford it anymore. So what are we going to sue you for? We're going to sue them for our damages, what we, the money right. we're losing, and what it's costing us right. because we don't have the contract with them. We would have, a, we would have the ability to put that on the table as our claim against them, correct? Right. Okay. I mean, against that scenario is also, and this isn't likely with Covanta, but you can have someone go bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So now you become a a claim in the bankruptcy court, and uh, you receive X amount on the dollar of whatever you felt you were owed. It's a big company. I think it's unlikely they go bankrupt. But I'm just saying there's a range of things that occur when there's a breach. and. Yeah, well, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, that, 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 would, that eventuality wouldn't concern me, but what would concern me is, you know, 
the, the process we would need to go through. I, I, you know, I feel that we would become whole, but well, we would have to go. We would have to go through the process of lengthy litigation and renegotiation to come up with numbers. We wouldn't necessarily be made whole. Yeah. We'd have a right to. I'm just saying. I, I, I understand. That he's in practice. Yeah, I, you know. I, I think when you sue, you often are thankful that you got something, but whether you're made whole is a whole other story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No one's. Right. We were concerned about it. That's why there is language in here that should that happen, Vant has a right to get out. Where, what do we do? Well, they 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 uh, have indicated we have a right to take our waste to Bristol at whatever the tip fee is. All right, let's go to now. market rate. Oh, and by the way, one thing I forgot too. Thirteen more trucks out. That's that's only one way. They're still coming in. So there's there's really twenty. I mean, well, the net yeah. change. Net, net of 13 trucks going out, but those trucks still had to drive back, drive in through Wallingford Roads empty to get the waste. Well, I'm not uh, sure it's just out. I think it's, I think it's, it's a truck. It's just a net change. That could be 13 counting back and forth. But we can try to clear that up. Well, well, well it's, but it's not a huge number. No, that's fine. Um, and, but if, and if in fact there was a problem, if in fact that bridge did at some point fail, Aside from the, 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 the comfort I've received knowing that we wouldn't be on the hook to rebuild it um, while it was out of commission, now what are the, where are these trucks going? Would you assume they'd have to travel down down uh, oh, yeah. Cherry to, say, Ward or Quinnipiac? I'm not well, 90, 90 uh, um, No, but I mean, how do they get to Route 5? That's my point. There's a rear entrance to the facility off the dock. Oh, there is. We still have to get to the other bridge. Yeah, the bridge would still be You know what I'm saying? They'd have, to, they'd have to get, they'd probably have to cross. Right, so they'd be on our roads a little bit more. Okay. Um, okay. I'm all set. Thank you. Quick question. Is there any indication of uh, wear and tear on the roads now from the trash point? There's nothing specified as far as that. The only thing I mean, I engineering of the come across uh, roads being... There are so many heavy trucks. When, when, when they put in all the turbines, we had right. huge pieces right. of equipment coming in. And I think they came over to John's the turbines, the Ellis Powell. That's a pretty good bridge. That, there was a lot of... As, as most of you know, I, I go back to 1986 when it was first developed. And the hue and cry about, you know, that bridge was about ready to fall down yeah. if you were to go back and listen to yeah. you know, the, the tapes. And here we are 25 years later. And Looking good. You know, it's, it, it is, they don't build them like that anymore, sort of my sense. Yeah. And the only thing we have with regard to wear and tear of the roads is really the accumulation of the, of the, the litter, the, the sticky goo on Cherry, Cherry Street, yeah. and they have been cleaning that. They're trying. Uh, and that's, there's language in this yeah. amendment that specifies that has to be cleaned. So yeah. that's the only thing I'm aware I've of. I've had a lot of complaints. That was exactly right. That. That's the only one right. I'm aware of. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. So good. Okay. Um, to listen to Dorian say that. No, the last meeting um, on October 28th, uh, there was a question that somebody in the town council or several of you um, asked about the taxation methodology. And we did go back uh, to the assessor, Shelby Jackson, and he did prepare a memo um, to that effect, uh, explaining you know, the, the rationale for the, the methodology he would use. I have copies of that. If I could give that to you and you distribute it. Hey, Mr. Chairman, one quick question. Don, are we going to pursue a plan B rather quickly? Well, the, the, um, obviously, the, the first fallback for the towns was access to the Bristol facility, having a place to go. Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of when will we you know, be looking at the 2020, we haven't really... Um, started to, uh, to you know, to no. do that. 
sort of waiting for some things at the state level to shake out a little more, as Doreen referenced. Um, the state policy um, under the uh, Hawaii administration was to go down the route of more materials recovery, recycling, and reuse. And you've begun to see facilities uh, being proposed and coming and hopefully coming online that will pull more waste out of the waste stream, particularly on the composting side. So I think it's a bit pre, you know, it's, it's, we just don't know how everything is going to shake out. You know, that's not the first time that the state has gone down the route of trying to do large-scale composting. You all may be, you know, I know I'm dating myself, but, you know, the NDC and CRRA tried to do an in-vessel composting facility up right off 91, mm -hmm. and were unable to make that work. We also tried composting down in Bridgeport. So, you know, I think it's a little premature. But it certainly will be something that we're going to need to begin tackling, you know, 2016, 2017, with the, with the other towns. We'll, we'll need to take it up with them and see how they also want to weigh in. And there will be a new state solid waste plan um, coming out in 2016. There'll be a what? A new solid waste management plan for the state coming out in 2016. So, you know, we'll see what that has to say. Sure. That can't be good. Mm -hmm. You know that can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can imagine. No, I guess I can't. So moved. Oh, is that a motion to adjourn?